Hello everyone. Welcome once again to this channel and welcome to our lecture series on strength of materials. Kindly do all to subscribe, like, and share. Leave your comments and suggestions as well. In today's lecture, we are looking at torsion. And because torsion is a broad subject, we are going to divide our lecture into two sections. So in the first session, we are going to look at what torsion is, some applications of torsion. We will look at the shearing stresses in shafts. We will also look at the deformation in shafts. And we will look at the relationship between torque and shear stress and apply that in solving some problems on caution. Then we will look at the second series in our, the second session in our next lecture. So quickly let's proceed from here and start with our lecture on the initial part of caution. Good. So we are saying that caution Torsion is the twisting force or the twisting of structural members when it is loaded by couples that reduce a rotation about its longitudinal axis. So we are saying that if these are the couples, we have T prime here and then we have T. So these two are forming a couple. Don't forget that in basic mechanics, we said that any time we have two equal but opposite forces like this, then they are forming a couple. So in this case, we have this and that forming a couple. And these two couples are causing twisting of the member along its longitudinal axis. So along the longitudinal axis, at the middle of the whole structure, they are causing twisting along that axis. And in this case, we see that what we have here is not a force. It's not a force. It's not a force. But this one is a rotational. It's not a linear force, but it's rather a rotational force. And that is why we call this this kind of forces the torque. We call it the torque. So this is the torque. This is a torque. This is a torque. And the two torques are forming a couple, which is causing twisting of the structure which we have on the screen. So what is a torque? We can say that torque is a moment force. We know that moment is equal to the force times distance, which is a rotational force. So we are saying that moment torque is a moment force or a rotational force that causes rotation around an axis. So in this case, you can see that this force will cause rotation along the longitudinal axis. So these forces here are referred to as rotational force or moment force which we said that it is referred to as a torque. Torsion, problems of torsion are encountered in many engineering applications. But the common one which is mostly encountered is in transmission shafts, in transmission shafts, whereby power is, this application of torsion, or the shafts are used to transfer power from one point to another. So in our discussion and attention, our concentration is going to be on circular bars. So we are going to look at circular bars, either it is a solid circular bar, or it can be a hollow circular bar. So this is going to be our focus in our discussion on caution. So quickly, let us move to our next screen and look at some applications of caution. 
<laughs> Sorry for that. So where can torsion be applied? We are saying that the idea of torsion is applied in many engineering applications, and one of them is in transmission shafts. So we want to look at some applications. Number one is in automobiles or automobile. So from automobiles, you see that uh, in these common cars or in these vehicles, which is used to transport us from one place to another, the car, the powerhouse of the car is the engine. <laughs> so what happens is that when you burn fuel in your engine, because of the burning which is taking place, energy is released. And the energy causes the piston within the cylinder to move up and down in the cylinder. So the movement of the piston, so if this is the piston in the cylinder of the engine, these pistons are going to move up and down, up and down like that. So the up and down movement is a linear motion. It's a linear motion. Now this piston is connected to what we call the crank shaft. The crank shaft. And this crank shaft turns this linear motion of the piston into rotational motion into rotational motion. Sorry for that, into rotational motion. And this rotational motion of the crankshaft is what is transmitted to drive the wheels of the car to cause motion cause motion of the car. And how this crankshaft transfers the energy, the rotational energy to the wheels is through transmission shaft, is through transmission shaft, which is an application of caution. Also in electricity generation, let me take, we can talk about when energy generation, we can even talk about the hydro. But let me use the hydro, for instance, as an example. Looking at how power is produced in the hydro dam, let's take it that in the hydro dam, water is stored which has some potential energy at certain height. So this energy in the water is allowed to run over a turbine is allowed to run over a turbine. So as the water runs over the turbine, it sets this turbine into rotational motion, rotational motion. And this rotational motion is connected or transmitted to a shaft. It's transmitted to a shaft, to a generator. And now this rotational motion of the shaft through certain arrangements in the generator, this rotational motion is converted to electricity. It's converted to electricity. So this is also another application of caution, where rotation of shafts play an important role. Good. So having said that, let us establish these two points before we go to our analysis. When we talk about, don't forget that we are saying that in this analysis, our focus is going to be on circular shaft. Anytime torques, torques are applied to a cylindrical shape like this, we are saying that though there will be deformations caused, but anytime you cut, this is a torque, and this is a torque forming a couple on this circular shaft. And we are saying that after these torques have been applied and some deformations have been caused to this shaft, when I cut through any part, I am still going to maintain 
that circular cross section. That circular cross section. And the radius is going to remain the same at every point. So if I cut at this point through that section, the radius will be the same as when I cut through this section and when I cut through this section. So it means that we are going to maintain that circle with that same radius. And that is why we are saying that every cross section remains plain and undistorted. We still have the same circle with the same radius. But that is not the same for non-circular shafts. So if we have a non-circular shaft, for example, the square shaft here, we see that when the torques were applied to the structure, part of the structure is distorted. So when I cut this section and I cut this section and I draw the diagram, you can see that the one at this section is a perfect square. But the one at the end here is now distorted. It's now distorted. It has lost its shape. <laughs> it has lost its shape. So we are saying that no circular shafts do not maintain their cross section when subjected to functional forces or when subjected to hooks and twisting motions. Good. So having established this, let us now go to the shear stresses in shafts. The shear stresses in shafts. Good. So if I have a shaft from A to B passing through the point C, and this shaft is subjected to couples, which are causing twisting motion. Then the bar is going to be four, but we are saying that the circular cross section is going to remain the same. Therefore, if I pick, if I cut through the portion C and I draw my circle like that. I'm still going to get my circular cross section. So let's take it that this is the center of that circle. So along this point here, in this circle, it is similar to what we have here. When I have a small area at this side, this is a small area at this side with area decay, because you are saying it's a small area. And the force which is causing this small area to deform. So let's take it that the force in this small area to deform is referred to as the F, which is a small force. Then, if this area is at the distance of rho from the center of the circle or the axis of the shaft, then from here, we have already established in our previous classes that the shear stress is equal to the force over the area. And we said that the area does not have to be perpendicular, but the area should be along the point of application of the force. So from here, our force is the F. Our force is the F. And our area is the A. So from here, we can say that we can make the F a subject from this formula. So we can say that the F will be equal to the shear stress times the A. The shear stress times the A. And from here, if we want to find the moment of this force here, the moment of this small area here. Then we know that moment is equal to the force times the distance. Before we continue to the moment, don't forget that when we're dealing with normal stresses, we said that when a force is applied at the longitudinal axis of body, then the normal stress can be assumed to 
the distribution of the normal stress can be assumed to be uniform. However, in our topic on this sharing stresses or torsion of circular shafts, let's take it that if I have an area here and I have another area there, another area here, the distribution of the shear stress is not going to be uniform. So depending on the position of the area in question or the point in question, the shear stress is going to be different. So now if we want to get the moment from here, then we can say that the moment of this small decay will be equal to the force which is applied there. And we have established the fact that the force which is applied there is tau decay. It says stress decay. Then now our distance is this row this row. So from here, we can say that the moment will be equal to rho tau decay. And this moment is the same as the torque. This moment is the same as the torque, which is the rotational force. So we can say that the torque is equal to the distance which is represented with this rule times the sharing stress times the area decay. Now, when we decide to sum, get the total torque applied on this session, we want to get the total torque, then it will be the total torque for this small object, the total torque of this small object, the total torque of another small object. And since the torques are different, so it means that the total torque there is going to be the integral or the summation of four of the torque for all the small, small areas. So we are going to get rho tau the A. Good. So this will be our formula for finding the torque when we have the distance from the center and the sharing stress and the area. Good. Now let's move from here to I've been able to derive the sharing stress in functional members. Let us move ahead to derive for the share strain to look for the share strain of members subjected to caution. Good. Let's consider this bar which we have here. So this is in the natural state, there's no torsional force. So now considering this member, if I have a point somewhere here along the radius, so if I draw the circular section of this side, Let's take it as the circular section is like this. And this is the center of the longitudinal axis. This is the center of the longitudinal axis. And this is the radius R. So if I have a point along the radius, and the distance of this point to the center is rho, then we are saying that when a torsional force or a twisting force is applied to this structure, if a torsional force is applied, this point here, because this force is trying to twist the member or the whole structure, this point here is going to also be twisted. And that point is going to move away from its original position. So after the twisting, this point which was here is going to move away from the original position to another point. So let, if this point was A, then we are saying that this new point is going to be A prime after the torsional force is applied. And the distance moved by this point to this point is through this angle phi. And this angle at the free end 
where at the free end of the bar, this angle for which this point moves through at the free end is referred to as the angle of twist. So the file is referred to as the angle of twist. The angle of twist, which is the movement of the point when the torsional force was applied, the twisting of that point. Now, if I have another, let's say that this is one line, I have another line here. Sorry for that, I want to draw a straight line. Let's assume that it's a straight line. So let's take it that I have a square, a square shape here, a square area at this point. I have a square area at this point. Before the twisting force was applied, now you can see that after the twisting force was applied, this line has twisted to this point. So the second straight line, which we did here, is going to also twist by that same amount at this side. And you can find out that because of the twisting, this square here is going to now become like a rhombus. It's going to be like a rhombus, like this. Instead of it being a square, the shape which was a square is going to become a rhombus. And you can see from here that when we're dealing with sharing stresses, we said that when the right angles of a shape, when a right angle of a shape is deformed, then it gives rise to what we call the sharing strain, which is gamma. So from here, because this twisting force has caused this square to be formed to form a rhombus. The angle here will be referred to as gamma, which is the angle at this point here. And the length from this point to that point is L. L. From this point to that point is L. So from what is indicated here is what I've already explained at this side. Therefore, if you want to get We want to get the length of the arc from this point to that point. The distance which this point moves through up to that point there. If you want to get that distance, then we can say that the distance from this point to that point, from this is the length of an arc. And from our menstruation class, we learned that the length of an arc the length of an arc is equal to r theta, r theta, which is the distance or the radius times the angle. So from here, you can see that we can find the length of this arc using this side, this triangle here to find the length of this arc, or we can also use this triangle here to find the length of the arc. So using this portion, we want to find the length of the arc, you can say that the length of the arc A, A prime will be equal to the angle times the length, which is gamma L. Then using this side to also find the length of the arc, we know that the length from this point, we stated that the length from this point to that point is rho, it is along the radius, it is rho. So we can say that a, A prime, the length of A, A prime is also equal to the distance from the center to that point, which is rho times the angle, which is phi, which you are referring to the angle of twist. But this and that are equal. This and that are equal. Therefore, we can equate these two equations and say that our gamma L is equal to phi times rho. And from here, we can say that gamma is equal to rho over L times phi, which is the angle of twist. So it means that our sharing strain, this gamma, don't forget that is a deformation in the right angles, and it is referred to as the sharing strain. 
So from here, we can say that the series strain is equal to the distance of a point from the center along the radius over the length of that circular shaft times the angle of twist, which is phi. And from this formula, from this formula, we can also be able to see that we can also be able to see that the series strain is directly proportional to the distance, the distance along the radius. The series strain is proportional to the distance along the radius. Therefore, it means that at the center here, where the distance is equal to zero, it means that gamma or the series strain will also be equal to zero. So on the Axis on the longitudinal axis of this bar, the series strain will be equal to zero. And we can also see that as we are moving from that center, the series strain will be increasing up to this point, which is the radius. So it means that the series strain will be maximum at where we have the radius. It's going to be maximum. So it will be minimum at the center, minimum at the center, and maximum, and maximum at the at the radius, the radius which is at the end of the circle. So we can say that at the edge here, at the edge of the circle, at the edge of the circle here, that is where the sharing strain is going to be maximum. So we can say that. The maximum when the row is equal to the radius. In some books, they use C for the radius, which is also equal to C. So when you see me using C, it's the same thing. They use C instead of radius. So we can say that when row is equal to the radius, that is where we have the maximum shared strain. And it will be equal to R over L, which is the radius times the angle of twist. So with this, if we decide to make this file the subject from here, so this is gamma maximum, the maximum sharing strain. So if we decide to make this subject from this side and this file the subject, since they are equal, from here we are going to get the angle of twist is equal to gamma maximum times the length over R. And from here, we are going to get the angle of twist. The angle of twist. We are going to get the angle of twist to be equal to gamma, the sharing strain, times the length over rho. And therefore, if we, we equate, since this is the angle of twist and this is the angle of twist, they are the same. So we can equate this and that. So equating this and that, sorry, let me clean some sessions here so that we can get space for our analysis. So when I equate the two sessions, we can say that the cell strain at a point along the radius will be equal to the maximum sharing strain times the length over the radius. And from here, we can say that this L will cancel this L. So we can say that the strain at every point along the radius is going to be the distance of that point along the radius, the distance of that point from the center along the radius over the radius, which is the maximum length from the center to the edge, times the maximum share strain, and the maximum share strain. Take note of these formulas, we'll be applying them when we get there. So from here, since you have been able to get this formula, so this formula relates the sharing strain at every point along the radius with respect to the maximum shear strain, which is at the edge of the cylindrical shape or at the radius of the cylindrical 
ship. So in terms of sharing stress, we know from the Hooke's law that up to the proportional limit, the shared stress is proportional to the sharing strain. So from this formula here, if we multiply everything there by If you multiply everything there, if you multiply everything here by gy, we multiply, this is gamma, the sharing strain, this is also the sharing strain. If you multiply everything there by g, we are going to get the share stress. So from here, we can see that gy is equal to rho r times the maximum sharing times G. And from here, this maximum sharing strain times G is equal to gamma tau maximum, the sharing stress maximum. And this is also the sharing stress. So we can see that the sharing stress, the sharing stress is equal to rho over R of the maximum sharing stress, of the maximum sharing stress. So take note of this formula. The strain at every point along the radius is equal to the distance from the center over the radius times the maximum sharing strain. Also, the stress, the sharing stress at every point along the radius is equal to the distance from the center to that point over the radius times the maximum share stress. So these two formulas are important to be applying them later on. So it means that the sharing strain is proportional to the distance from the center along the radius. And it's also, the sharing stress is also proportional to the distance from the center. It therefore means that in this circular portion of our structure, the stress distribution, if I draw the circular object like that, then the stress distribution from the center, the stress is, if this is the center, and from this point to that point is R, the total length from this point to that point is R, then it means that at the center here, the stress will be zero. Then the stress will be increasing as I am moving away from the center. The stress will be increasing as I'm moving away from the center. And of course, the maximum share stress is going to take place at. So the stress, this is how the stress is going to be distributed. It is going to start from zero and increase till we get to the radius of the circle. So take note of that. So I believe this is understood. Now let us go to the relationship between torque and the shear stress. Let's go to the relationship between the torque and the shear stress, and we use that to solve some examples. Use that to solve some examples. Good. The maximum sharing stress has already been explained. That the maximum sharing stress, that was what was done in the previous slide, that the maximum share stress, the share stress at every point is equivalent to rho over R times the maximum share stress. And we said that that varies along the radius of the circle. So from the center of the circle, the shear stress is zero, but it increases as you move along the radius to the edge of the circle. And the maximum of S, so is, the distribution is going to be like this along the, the center. Good. So quickly, let's look at
the relationship between the talk and the share stress. So from our previous slide, we said that the talk at every point. So if I have a circle like this, this is the center, and I have an area like this here, then we said that the talk at this point is equal to the top, is equal to the integral, the top in the whole area is equal to the integral of the distance from this point to that point, which is said that we are representing with rho, and the shear stress times the A. So we have already seen this formula. And we have also stated that the shear stress at every point is equal to, don't confuse yourself with the shear stress and the top. The shear stress at this and this is the top. So the shear stress is equal to the rho over R times the shear stress maximum. We have also proved this from our previous slide. So from here, if we decide to substitute this equation here, which is the shear stress, then our torque will be equal to the integral of rho times rho over r times our stress maximum, our maximum shear stress times the A. And from here, we see that we have rho rho. So we are going to get three is equal to the integral of rho square over r times the maximum shear stress decay. Since we are integrating with respect to area, this shear stress and this radius will be constant. So we can just write it as T, the torque is equal to the shear stress over R and the shear stress maximum over R and the integral of rho square dA. But don't forget that when we're dealing with centroids and moment of inertia, we said that anytime we have integral of rho square dA, it is referred to as the second moment of area. Second moment of area. Which we also refer to as moment of inertia of area. Moment of inertia of area. Good. But in this case, we are dealing with circular objects. We are dealing with circular objects. And if you remember, we stated that anytime we are dealing with circular objects, now our distance in question is the radius, is the radius. And we stated that the radius, once we are using the radius for circular objects, the moment of inertia becomes the polar moment of inertia the polar moment of inertia. The polar moment of inertia. So whatever, all this is the polar moment of inertia, which is represented with J. So from here, the whole of this formula is going to be tau mass, tau mass times G over R. Tau mass over G over R. And from here, we can get the maximum shear stress. So this, the torque is equal to the maximum shear stress times the polar moment of inertia over the radius. And from here, if you want to get the maximum shear stress, then the maximum shear stress will be equal to the torque times the radius over the polar moment of inertia of area. So take note of these formulas. So from this formula, this is when we have, because we have the maximum shear stress, it means that we are dealing with the radius. 
What if the distance is not up to the radius, but the distance in question is at a point along the radius and with distance is a, with a distance rule. Then in that case, our formula becomes the maximum, the shear stress at that point, the shear stress at that point is equal to the torque times rule, which is our distance along the radius over the polar moment of inertia, over the polar moment of inertia. So from this formula, you can see that the, mass, the shear stress, no, this one is not the maximum, but rather the shear stress. We only deal with the maximum when we are talking about the radius. So from here, we realize that the shear stress let me clean this size so that we can do an analysis on some analysis on the formula. From here, we realize that the shear stress is proportional to is proportional to the top. It's proportional to the top. So it means that when I have a beam like this. One end is supported, and I have my circular shaft like this, and the torque is applied at this direction. Then I need to cut through this side and obtain the internal top gear and use it for my analysis. So that is going to be my top gear. If I have multiple tops applied to an area of uniform cross section, so this is an area of uniform cross-section, so uniform diameter. So if I have a top here, another top at this side, another top at that side, and it means that now I have to get the resultant of the tops. I have to get the resultant of the tops. When I cut through this section, then now my to use the equilibrium equations to determine the total top in the uniform cross-sectional area. And don't forget that here we are going to use this assumption. Any top which is going in the clockwise direction like this is negative. And any top which is going in the anti-clockwise direction is going to be positive. We can also see that the shear stress is related to the J, which is the polar moment of area of polar moment of inertia and the polar moment of inertia is related to distance or the radius and the radius is also a function of the diameter so it means that we can see that the shear stress is and is inversely proportional to j so it means that anytime we are giving a structure which is not having a uniform procession, like if we have cylindrical shapes like this, then because the formula is related to J and it is related to the diameter, it means that we need to divide our structure into smaller sections according to the varying diameters and determine the shear stress in each of the sessions, in each of the sessions. So once we are done, we can be able to get our total shear stress or the maximum where the maximum shear stress is acting on our structure. So having done this, let us solve an, some examples on what we have done. And then from there, we bring the first session of our lecture to an end. And we will meet again for the second session of on the lecture on on the lecture on caution. Good. So let's see some examples and how to solve them. So quickly, let's look at this example. The solid shaft is fixed to support at C 
and subjected to torsional loading shown determine the shear stress at point A and point B. So you can see that our point A is at this point. This is our point A and this is our point B. And we are told that the diameters are varying. Look at it from the question. We are told that the diameter at point A is 50 millimeters. And the radius at point A, sorry for that. So the radius at point A is 50 millimeters. And the radius at point B, we are told that it is 75 millimeters. So it means that here the radius is changing. And therefore, it is going to affect our polar moment of inertia. And for that matter, we need to divide this into sections. So our first session is going to be up to this point. So when we encounter any change in radius, we are going to divide. So it means that at point B, at point B, we can divide at this point, and at point A, we can also divide. So we can analyze the shear stress at this point section and also analyze the shear stress at this section since their diameters are changing. Good. So from here, let us look at how we are going to solve our problem. So from the question, first of all, we need to find the polar moment of Area. The polar moment of area, let me add this. The formula for finding the polar moment of area for solid, for solid shafts, for solid shafts. When I talk about solid shafts, I'm talking about a shaft without any hole in it. So the formula for finding the polar moment is I on two, R raised to the power four. Pi on two R is the power four. And the formula for finding for hollow for hollow shafts, J O for hollow shafts is equal to the formula is equal to pi on two into brackets. You see, because it's hollow, we are going to get something like this. And this whole space is empty. Therefore, it's going to be the radius of this from this point to that point, which is, we can call as C1, and the radius at this point, which is C2. It's going to be the radius of this minus the radius of that. Or this can be R1 and this can be R2. Our formula is going to be R2 squared minus R1 squared. So this will be the formula for finding the polar moment. But in this case of our question, the shaft is a solid shaft. Therefore, we just need to we are doing the radius so we can determine our polar moment of inertia J. And the formula is pi G, and we know that the radius was given point at point A. We were told that at point at point B, we were told that the The radius is equal to 0 0.075. So we just put that radius in there. And we get our polar moment. We get our polar moment. And from there, our polar moment is going to be 49.70. Okay, good. So once we get our polar moment, sorry for this, good. So we're told that the diameter at B was 75. So sorry about that. The radius is the same. The radius is 75 at, at point A. We want to determine the we want to determine the torsion from the center to a distance of 50 millimeters, but the radius is the same. 
but the radius is the same. But because we are encountering different torsions, then we need to, and even the question has specified that we need to determine the shear stress at point A and point B. So that is how we are dealing with our question. So it means that this polar moment is going to be the same for point A and point B, point A and point B. Both of them is at the radius. The radius of the circular section is 0 0.75. But for point B, we are told to indicate the shear stress at the point B, which is 0 0.075 from the center to the radius. So in that case, our formula, what we are going to do is to, to get the, the top in BC, we just cut through the point B. And when we cut through the point B, our structure is like this. And so when we cut through the point B, a top has been applied in this direction, like this. And we are told that the top is, the value of the top is four kilonewtons. Is four kilonewtons. Sorry for this. The value of the top is four kilonewtons. And we said that we determine the internal top. So the internal top can be here, which we can refer to as TB. TB. So we can say that this TB is going in the anticlockwise. So we can say that TB minus, this is going to the clockwise, so minus four kilonewtons is equal to zero. And from there, we can see that our TB is equal to four kilonewtons, which is the top in portion B, the top in portion B. So once you have gotten the top and you have gotten our polar moment, then the distance, The C is the distance along the radius. So at point B, we are told that the distance there where we should determine the point along the radius where we should determine the shear stress is 75 millimeters, which is 0 0.05 meters. So we just put that is C. So C is equal to R. C is equal to R in this case. So our formula is going to be 0 0.075 times the top over what we have calculated for, which is our polar moment. And from there, we'll get the shear stress in portion B. Now, when we come to the shear stress in portion A, from the question, we are told to determine the shear stress at a point which is 50 millimeters. So the whole radius is 75. And you have been asked to determine the shear stress at the point which is 50 millimeters from 50 millimeters from the center, from the center. So it means that the distance is going to be rho, and rho will be equal to 50, which is going to be 0 0.05 in meters. But this polar moment of area is going to be the same. Don't forget that when we are calculating the polar moment of inertia, we don't use the rho, but we use the C or the R, which refers to the radius of the circular section, not the distance along, not the distance along the, the radius. So from here, the polar moment is going to remain the same what you have calculated, and then we put our values in, and we can get our shear stress at that point. I believe that is simple, and all of us understand that simple concept. So if that is understood, let's solve our second question. Then from there, we'll bring our lecture to an end on this subject. So quickly, let's go to our next page and try to solve this question. Try to solve this question. Good. So we are told that knowing that 
a 0 0.40 inch diameter hole has been drilled through each of the shafts A, B, B, C, and C. Determine the shaft in which the maximum sharing stress of A and the magnitude of gas sharing stress. So with this question, we have we have three different shafts. The shaft from A to B, the shaft from B to C. We are talking about this one. These ones are the shafts. And we have the one from this point to that point, which is BC, the one from this point to that point. And each of them have different diameters. But we are told that a constant hole of 0 0.40 has been drilled through each of the shafts. So it's a hollow shaft. And we are asked to determine that which of the shafts will have the maximum sharing stress. So in this question, we cannot just look at it and say that this is where the maximum sharing stress is going to occur. So what we are going to do is to analyze the shear stress in each of the shafts. And from there, we can be able to determine where the maximum sharing stress is occurring. Where the maximum sharing stress is occurring. So from here, if we move on to our next page, If we move on to our next page, let's try to solve the question. So in the question, we need to determine the shear stress in each of the shaft. First of all, let's consider AB. In AB, we are told that the diameter, don't forget that the, the radius, the diameter of the hole created, of the hole, is equal to four zero point four inch. So it means that the radius of the hole is going to be zero point four over two, which is going to give us zero point two, and this will be constant for inch. This will be constant for all the other shafts. Then the radius of this shaft AB, the radius of shaft AB, we are told that. So it's equal to C2. We'll be using those things interchangeably. So this will be R1, which is the same as C1. And so C1 and R1 will be used interchangeably. Don't be confused about that. So the diameter for AB, we are told that is 0 0.8. So it means that the radius is going to 0 0.8 over 2, which is the diameter over 2. And that is going to be 0 0.4. 0.4. So once we have gotten that, what we need to do is to determine the internal torque in the shaft AB. The internal torque. So in the shaft AB, this is A to B. We want to determine the internal torque. So we know that a torque of a torque of 800 pounds per inch, which is in the which is in the Clockwise direction has been applied at this point. Has been applied at this point. So internally, what is going to be the, the top? So the top AB in the shaft. So here we can see that the top AB in the shaft will be equal to Let's write the equilibrium equations. I don't want to use the equal to straightforward. So let's try to write the equilibrium equation. So from here, we can say that the torque AB is in the anti-clockwise direction. Look at it. This is anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise. And when you have this, it is clockwise. So we can see that this one is clockwise. So this is going to be negative. So we have negative 800. And this is positive because this is anti-clockwise is equal to zero. And from there, we can say that TAB will be equal to 8,000 or is it 800 or 8,000 pounds? 800. 800 pounds. Inch. And from there, we can also determine our, don't forget that our formula is the shear stress 
The formula is the shear stress is equal to the torque times the distance or the radius over J. And from here, we are determining the torque. We are left with J, which is the polar moment of inertia. So from here, we can say that J, we have already seen the formula. The formula is pi on two. And because here it is hollow, it is going to be C2 minus C1. So you are going to get C2 square, C2 raised to the power four, minus C1 raised to the power four. One is the power four. So from here, our J O is going to be our J O is going to be pi on two into bracket. 0 0.4 square, C2 is 0 0.4, so 0 0.4 square minus 0 0.2, not square, sorry, I confused that, so it's raised to the power 4, not square, so from here, J O will be equal to, J O will be equal to 0 0.0377. And we can calculate our shear stress in AB. So our shear stress in AB will be equal to using this formula to be equal to 800, which is our torque times C. C is the C to the outer diameter, which is 0 0.4 over our G, which is 0 0.0377. And from here, tau AB to be able to give us to be able to give us a value of 8488 PSI. And we can also do for BC, sharp BC. So for sharp BC, we just determine the torque. We have this circular. We have a torque of 800. Then this is the sharp AB. Another torque has been applied here in this direction, and this torque is 2400. And we have cut through, so this is BC. The point we want to determine the torque. So the torque, this is the internal torque in BC. So from here, we can say that uh, this is tau BC. This is the torque BC, not the tau. So T for BC. And from here we can say that from here we can say that let me clean this ones, but don't forget that anti-clockwise is positive and clockwise is negative. So from here we can say that negative T B C negative T B C plus 2400 because that, that one is anti-clockwise. So it's positive. 800 is clockwise, so minus 800 should be equal to zero. And from here, we can say that TBC should be equal to 1,600 pounds per inch, pounds per inch. Then once you have been able to do that, we can get our radius. We're told that the diameter of that section, so C2 for TBC, is the same as R2 equals to B on 2. And the diameter given for that side is 1, 1 inch. So 1 over 2 is going to give us 0 0.5 inch. It's going to give us, it's going to give us 0 0.5 inch, 0 0.5 inch. And from there, we can determine our zero because that side is also hollow. So uh, it's going to be pi on two, pi on two. Then we have C2 raised to the power four minus C1 raised to the power four. But you already know C2 and C1. C2 is 0 
C1 is 0 0.2. So once you put them in this formula, our J, which is the polar moment of inertia, is going to be pi on two into brackets, 0 0.5 raised to the power four minus 0 0.2 raised to the power four. And from here, J will be equal to 0 0.0956. Inch raised to the power four. The unit is inch raised to the power four. Then from here we can just determine the stress in DC. The stress in BC will be equal to the top in BC, the internal top, and C2. Sorry for this, and C2 over. A. And from there, when you put all those values in, we have 1,600. We have 1,600 times 0 0.5 over 0 0.0956. And from there, our stress in BC is going to be 8363PXI, PXI. So now let's look at the talk in the last session and we began with this question. Allow me to clean the talk in the first session so that you can be able to analyze the talk in the last session on this piece here. So from here, the talk in the last session, which is shaft, B shaft, CD. The talk in shaft CD. In shaft CD. The talk in shaft CD will be equal to, first of all, we determine the the top. So we have this. This is AB. This is BC, and this is CD. This is where we want to determine the internal talk, the internal talk, and we know that a talk of one thousand is applied here. This one is a talk of two thousand four hundred. 2,400, this is a top of 800. A top of 800. Take note of the directions, whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So from here, the top, if you are looking for top CD, top CD, so T, CD will be equal to, no, sorry, T, CD, is in the clockwise, so it's negative. As this 1,000 is in the anti-clockwise direction, so plus 1,000, sorry, 1,000. This 2,400 is also in the anti-clockwise, so plus 2,400. This one is in the clockwise, minus 800, should be equal to zero. And from there, we can see that TCT, when you do the math, should be equal to 2,600 pounds per inch. Then we know that the diameter of that is 1.2. So C2, which is equal to R2, should be equal to B on 2, which is equal to 1.2, the total diameter of 1.2 over 2, which will be equivalent to 0 0.6. And from there, from here we can determine our J, the polar moment of inertia will be equal to, you know the formulas already, so let me put the value straight forward, pi on 2, 
pi on 2 times 0 0.6 raised to the power 4 minus C1, which is 0 0.2 raised to the power 4. And from the J O will be equal to 0 0.2. 20106 inch raised to the power 4. And we can be able to now easily calculate for our share stress in that shaft. Our share stress in that shaft. So from there, we can see that our share stress in that shaft now for how for CD should be equal to CC2 over J, and that will be equal to 2,600 is our top times 0 0.6, which is our radius over the J, which is 0 0.201, and from the TCD, it's equal to 0 0.02. One and the question two has to determine which one has the sorry, this one is equal not two zero one. Sorry, that is equal to seven one five nine. And from the question, we're asked to select which one has the maximum share stress. So from our calculation, we see that AB chapter AB has the maximum share stress, which is equivalent to eight four eight eight. PSI. And we are done solving the question. So you we'll end here with this lecture series. We will continue with the part two of this series, which is on angle of twist. Angle of twist. Power transmission of shaft. And also we we'll look at the strain energy of shaft. And we'll be done with caution. Thank you very much for keeping in touch with us. We are very grateful to have you with us. Kindly subscribe, like, share, leave your comments and suggestions as well. Thank you for your time. Until then, when we meet again for our next lecture, bye-bye.